and welcome back. Ahead of a much anticipated game two, Gen G sent back to the drawing board. BLG given a lot of comfort, reminding us uh, how exactly they got to this tournament, why they were considered so dominant domestically in that first game. And Gen G, we're just going to have to see how they adapt. In game one, Gen G said, "What if we give them all their favorite champions?" And it didn't work. I think that's that's a you know, it's it's game one of a best of five. But there, if it had worked, you were it, really set up for the works. rest of the series. I love your body language. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not going to say it's great, great, but it didn't work. <laughs> so <laughs> now, Gen G, I want to see a big pivot here. I think one game, particularly against a team like BLG, don't necessarily have to be too worried. We get into Champ Select. And as we enter Game 2 Champ Select, powered by Omen and HyperX, you can see a very similar band strategy. BLG back when on the red side. When you say similar, do you mean identical? I mean the identical? same. <laughs> I mean identical. Oh, oh, right. Right. All right. All right. It's one of those things where just like, how good is he really? What is it? What, I mean, what does it really mean? <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, it, it really means you got to ban it. All right, fair enough. Genji will uh, will pay the RE tax as the Senna is locked in once again for Genji. I am, I am more okay with it than it was in game number one because the Ari is gone. I think That's in particular, fair. the Senna and the Nautilus lane didn't really end up panning out. We'll see if they want to swap away, go maybe towards the Kench, although I feel like that, that, that combo wasn't the problem. And it's important to note that come mid-game, Genji was in a fine position. It was the execution on the team fights that didn't really deliver. And I'm hoping that Chovy in particular gets something that he looks more comfortable on as we do again get this ash Callista combo, which was instrumental in getting BLG that I win. mean, they're going to go for Cassante or Twisted Fate, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, they're scared to go for the TF this time around because the Jax is still available. So instead, they're going to go for more frontline with the Cassante. Um, I think Cassante is great into champions like Callista, just because I think that, especially with the Lethali Callista, you really do struggle if the Cassante gets ahead to break down that wall. But I'm curious as to what direction Knight now goes with his pool. Do they even want to prioritize that? Do they want to actually get something for Bin in the top side of the map, or do they just want to lock in? I was going to say something safe like the Sejuani again, and they're going to do that. We already saw how effective Ash Sejuani as a duo is so good at chasing you down in the extended fight. Still a really strong combo. The one big difference is that this time, if Genji is in a 5v5 situation, they have someone who can tank. We saw in the last game, Lahens, I don't think having the best performance on the Nautilus, one of the big advantages of farming Nautilus is that he's an actual tank, actual frontline that can take a big beating. That wasn't really the case, but with Cassante there, at least in a 5v5 setting, there is an easier way than just dodging the arrows. In particular for Chovy on an immobile mate that was a really big problem, this time around should be a little bit easier as, again, more mid lane bans. Yeah, I was about to say, there are six mid lane bans this game, gentlemen. Yeah. Of course, Knight versus Chovy, their pools will be tested naturally. While Knight did get the advantage as more bans come through, I'm going to remind you back to the stat that Dracos gave us earlier. When we look at the control mages that Knight has played in this tournament, Azir, Oriana, Corky, all losses for him. So, which direction will he go as the pool continues to get narrower? What will the priority be for both mid laners here? I imagine that means that BLG might want to pick up the Orianna on four here. Deny it to Chovy, even though he didn't have the best of games. Still a lot of team fighting power in that pick. Certainly. Is Genji going to ban it away or not? It's a very good question. Or do they want to le uh, leverage another topside ban? Is that Keen more up for success? Renekton wow. going to be the takeaway here. Bin, I think, one of the only players of the tournament to opt for that particular matchup over something uh, like a Vayne. Obviously, Vayne taken away in this game. Could it be a Nico, maybe? Or maybe just, okay, he's going to go for the Orianna. Yeah. And this is really a full court press in draft to try to limit Chovy's impact on the game. A lot of Chovy fans in the previous one, most certainly, but now taking away the pick that he used in game one. And already a decent delivery system on the side of BLG in the form of Sejuani for that Orianna ultimate. So, so again, a lot of team fighting power for BLG in the last game. It wasn't about the early aggression, even though we did see the trademark as we all know Chovy uh -huh. loves his yeah! Yoni! Oh, yes! Game one! Yes! He didn't deliver in game two. He says, guys, it's okay. I got this. As, oh, oh my, my god! god. god. Okay. Oh. okay, game one. What? Game one with a bit of a test. Look. Game two, they are throwing down. I, I've watched enough Dragon Ball Z to know when a man is saying, this isn't my final form. <laughs> and this is that moment for Chovy and Gen G. This is a volatile draft, no doubt. Oh my But a god. powerful one. A lot of setup, a lot of CC. The poke coming in from Canyon. Bin responding with his jacks. We got signature picks oh. abound. Oh. And I think this one might be a bit bloodier, gentlemen. I, 
I, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I, I get excited about Yone in Italy, but I have to ask, like, does it make sense? Is it good? <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> or you could forget your job <laughs> as a color caster, as an analyst, and you could live so, in the moment of joy we've been presented. The advantage we have is that we've seen Canyon at this tournament with the Nidalee. And it, he started that game off with a not great performance, and then he bounced back yeah. to perfection. It's particularly against Sejuani, you have... Uh, in that composition, they had a lot of poke, like a lot of poke, right? They had, uh, I believe it was Lethali Callista, they had Corky, they had Nidalee, so they drafted like heavy poke, leverage range, played very patiently. This time around, you've got a bit more dive with Yone and Cassante looking to try and get in. You've got the front line of a Nautilus, and I think that in an extended fight, the advantage of Nidalee is the fact that you have that consistent poke at your disposal, but I will say the setup is quite different to when we saw the last time Canyon brought it out. For Chovy, some of the greatest games of League of Legends I have ever seen. The Chovy meme came from him, 1v9ing on this specific champion. Game one, wasn't able to actually execute. I, I, I okay, I've, you, I'm you really, no, 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 okay? no, you committed. I tried to commit. No, I respect the commitment. I don't think people would have understood, otherwise you're just saying his name. But we'll see if uh, Chovy Thank you, Derek can carry this one. You uh, know what's going to happen now, just so that we're clear. Every time that he... If he makes a play... I like, uh, <laughs> all right, I'll we'll commit. We're, 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 we're all committed. We're, we're, we're not Korean, but we can try, we're gentlemen. Doing we're going to do one, two, three, and then yell his name very loud. If you're at home, please participate. It's yeah. also with a B. It's not a V. Very important. Okay, got it. For authenticity. Also... Benny and I, we were wrecking our brains in the last game. Was Lahens going for a specific strategy? We <laughs> yes. now have confirmation. No, he it's, just made a big mistake. It's the worst feeling as a caster when you see something that you're pretty sure is wrong, but you're like, am I the wrong? Uh, or like, what is going on here? And so thanks for a bit of validation, Lahens. <laughs> we, were not, we were not in the wrong. You just made a mistake in the previous game, and that's fine. We move on. Here in game two, we restart, and we have the joy of getting to see Bin on his Jax, Chovy on his Yone, Canyon on the Nidalee. A lot of exciting times ahead. So talk about this Yone. In the 1v1, obviously into the Talia, going to be insanely tough to reliably deal with, particularly once you get to the mid to late stage of the game. The Jax, though, I really like it because it's both decent into Cassante, can actually pressure him, and obviously has a lot of pressure when we get later in the game. Is Chovy using his fleet on the Raptor? Oh, that's super cool. Sorry, yeah. I, you're making a great point, Carl. Like, oh, I, I, I get it. <laughs> it's, it's super cool. to He knows that he's getting bullied in the early laning phase, and so he's just leveraging the, the Q3 to be able to hit onto the Raptors to be able to get some of that HP back. And I love the split lane camera, but you can see that particular perspective on your right at the moment seems to be favoring BLG as they fight for push here on the bottom side. We didn't get the first few levels of lane in game one. There was a swap, so this time around we get to see the full power of both these 2v2s going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Although not a Hail of Blades angle from Elf this time around is going. Attack speed is going on hit for the Callista instead. I mean, I, I like this much more when playing into a Katante. We already talked about how the front yeah, line is sure. that much different for Genji this time around. Cannon going to be spotted out. One of the big strengths of Nidalee is, of course, her clear speed. You can see she has a bit of an advantage over Jun for the time being. But uh, not much pressure to play around. We look at the minimap, we saw the split cam earlier, push across the board for Jun, and he's going to try and leverage that. He's making his way into the jungle. Let's see if he can do something cheeky here with Canyon's red. Oh, the ward. Nice ward to spot. Spear for a bit of poke passive from Jun there. Here. Wants to steal this one away. Q forward, Arctic Assault, marking up Canyon. And he's on the nice. way. That is going to be red buff taken by Shun, slowing down the Nidalee, crucially. Just really well played. Chovy getting very low. Another nice trade for Knight, leveraging the strength of Orianna in the early laning phase. Going to be forced to use that pot at last. First couple of levels, the big thing. Because post six, all of a sudden, stepping up becomes much more dangerous. So Knight trying to put as much damage on Chovy, trying to make sure he gets low as all. Oh, mana on, caught out now. Canyon immediately ready to punish. First blood for the side of Gen G. Nice pick there from Gen G. On's aggression has allowed Jun to move into the enemy jungle and steal some of those camps away. Canyon going to be able to secure the Scuttle Crab in exchange. Maybe he can actually make his way towards the top Should river. Be. Yeah, and be able to secure both of them. Knight with a nice sidestep there is Canyon. He's not done with his aggression. Pushes Knight back. Push back from Keen. Good. Counter-Strike not quite going to hit. 
Nor is the Q3 from the Cassante. And important to note, AP Junglers, that first recall, if they have a gold influx at all, any additional gold, they get a good first buy. That spear cl uh, clear speed increases exponentially. Not a big thing with Nidalee specifically, and this was a big issue in the last game when we saw it from Canyon, was that you need setups. Jovi! Jovi! Q healing doesn't look like it connects. That heal, I'm pretty sure missed. <laughs> but hey, Jovi, it's fine. understanding his limits, Lahens. I think you've overstepped here. Shun now walking up, hitting him with the Blitzcrank question mark. Lahens, this is not your bot lane, but that sure as hell is the enemy jungler. Lahens getting knocked down. Well, Lahens, especially with pace showing in mid, you can't afford to just be up that far. Kenyon, seeing Shun, is going to try and take as many camps as he can. The BLG strike back. I mean, I think that just came from a poor wave state bot. He was trying to get the push in, trying to fix it for his team. So, if we could have seen how the early waves did, like, I, I question if that was even his fault, because if they'd abandoned it, it could have been even worse in the later stages. But uh, the consequences for BLG of that play is look at Canyon. He is just tearing apart that topside jungle. He has stolen away all those camps. You can see the advantage he's starting to gain. It's good that Shun gets a kill to keep the gold relatively even, but. We know what Canyon can do when he's on a farming jungle. Trovi now level six. One of the big things, as we were uh, interrupted by Lahens getting taken down there, is the fact that you have set up in every single lane for this Nidalee. There is CC everywhere, obviously. The top lane can be a little bit hard to reliably land it, but there's the knockups from both the Cassante and the Yone, and then the CC from Lahens as well. Trovi stepping far forward, Shun has been an early game menace, looking for maybe a play here towards the mid lane as well. Good movement from Chovy, wandering up towards the top side of the lane, had Q3 available to escape as well as the ulti in Flash. Now that he's survived and gotten that first back, obviously much more comfortable in the lane with the refillable, with the additional levels. The LG. And Gen G find themselves pretty even in terms of gold. Drank gonna be started off by BLG. His information is garnered. Thanks to the little, little bat, I would say, from on, on that skin. Little dragon? Maybe a dragon? Yeah, it could be a dragon too. Canyon. I think it's gonna know and immediately heads towards the grubs. I like this adaptation from Canyon, knowing that this is the best window for him to take advantage of this. Keen also feeling very safe to proxy with the information garnered. As long as Keen is aware of where Sean is. He can move forward on the Cassante. Possible dive angle though, because they surely also must know. We saw this workout in the last game. Gonna try it here again. Hey, stepping very far back. Sean, do they really want to try this dive? Onto the Nautilus, good heads up movement from Paige to just back away. If you want to dive Lahens, he will be there to cover. He has the cleanse for himself and much more discipline, adaptation from the game one dive. Nicely done, because Lahens can proc his Aftershock and then becomes a much harder dive target compared to Pays in the previous game, especially without the Flash. Not going to be the case. So take a look at the play that happened earlier. Flashes were being traded. Does mean that Knight Alts. in particular... Uh, sorry, Ult's being traded. Thank you very much, Betty. Uh, as a result, particularly Knight can step up a little bit safer, knowing that Chovy can only CC him with the Q3. Level 6 for Canyon. That top side of the jungle. Really has belonged to him. His smite on cooldown should. Walking up. Level six. There for Canyon, not there for Shun. So won't really have the tools to follow up. And you can see this Nidalee is just such a nightmare for Shun. Taking away those topside camps on cooldown. BLG though, still with advantage on the bottom side of the map. Unsurprisingly, the hen's hook gonna go straight into the minion. Genji just doing the best that they can to clear the wave to stop any additional plates from going over to the BLG bottom lane. Level six for Elk means that trading back is only going to be harder right now for Pays and Lahens. They're forced to play defensively. Some really nice trading is coming out from Keen. I would say the early laning phase is going in favor of Bin, but that's slowly starting to swing in the favor of Keen. Shun now, level six, sets his sights on the top lane. Keen gets the wave in, knows this is happening as well. They might be posturing a little bit. Standing that Canyon is in the area, but also Cassante, so much innate safety. On two walking two. up. Hook out from Lahens, the slow from Ash, so frustrating to play against as Pace tries to fire back. Again, damage is gonna stick at this point. There's no pots available for Lahens, so can't afford to, to lose too many more trades. Does have his teleport available. Big thing there is that engaging on Anu was posturing forward is really hard because of the Fate's goal. So if you throw too much into that Ash, he gets pulled back, and Elk gets to stack his spears. He's sitting on a decent amount of gold, I'm pretty sure, because does have a nice amount of CS here. Only sitting on pot 
boots and a long sword. Maybe they don't want to go in two hands. Lahans on the ward here. Of course, the poke going to be less effective as it's likely not the Lethality Callista instead. The on hit, but the sustain, the extended lane is going to be very tricky for the side of Genji and Ayaka, especially as Pays does have some cookies to fill up that mana bar, but the relative sustain. Not super oh, they powerful see the yet. coming. Knights on his way. Oh, recall. Instant TP though. They want to protect this one, but Pays again caught out here. The fall of Canyon on the way forward. They're looking for the spears, looking for the angle. On retreating now, but it's the AD carry. Caught. Shun is tanky, but the bot lane is not. Beautiful punish from Gen G. Gen G learned from their mistakes in game number two. Canyon is ready. Lahance arrives just in time. And a free for zero for the Gen G bot lane. Such a heavy commitment from PLG. Elk even flashed with on uh, in the ultimate to make sure that that engage could happen. But a really nice cleanse from Pays is enough to buy time. And Canyon doing such a good job of reading the map. He knows what's coming. And I'll draw your attention to the minimap. Look at Canyon making his way as quickly as he can. A great cleanse. And then this flash from Elk is such a heavy commitment. A nice ultimate from Lahens connects onto Elk. They take him out first. And it's three kills for Gen.G. Crucially, no level six there yet. A little bit of extra CC. Maybe they could have at least gotten the kill onto pace. Take away some of the sustain, but instead, really big win there for Gen G. Kills going over to the Lahans. This time around, might be a lot tankier than he was in the last game. And Canyon on this Nidalee, building his lead even further. And it's only going to get more difficult for BLG to play out the earlier stages of this game. Canyon getting further and further ahead. Chovy's made it through some of the hardest parts of the lane already. In your bot lane, where you're supposed to have this massive advantage, the play completely whiffs. And now it might be Ben who's going to suffer on the top side of the map. Diving at Jax, I can't imagine. GP. But here comes Elk. No face call. He's just going to try to turn on to Pays in the meantime. Chovy on the way in. Misses the initial Q. Elk just trying to dance around it, but the damage is simply too much. Fate going to be sealed here. Soul unbound back to finish the job. And Chovy gets his first kill of the game as Genji's also trying to dive top lane. Knights force a TP defense. The mid lane has been completely abandoned as Jun is stealing away the Raptors to get something back for BLG. That should be the Grubs though, because Knight TP's in, doesn't actually get anything out of it and gets hit by an immediate spear. Bin also forced to flash. Might be a lot more Grubs coming through. We do see Sean making his way over, but so is Lahans as oh, Keen might be walking to a trap here. Right, walking forward, going unstoppable, gets the initial dash out, has the Q3. Knight committing, Shockwave back, Bin instantly gonna fall with the ulti and down goes Keen. Knight making sure that his presence is being felt in this game. Assists his top laner in securing that kill. Grub has been stolen by BLG. Canyon doesn't want to give this last one up. He absolutely doesn't, but it might cost him his life. Good knockup coming in from Lahens. In the meantime, Pei stepping up. The heal there. Knight going to get rooted briefly. On oh, not really much of a threat, but Jun going to queue out over the wall. And Gen G establishing control again around the mid lane. Genji will get the grubs, but that kill still going to be big on Bin, one of your bigger side lane threats. Maybe a possible answer as we get later into the game into this Yone as well. Obviously, does do a whole lot of autoing, and it's Knight turning a rough situation there around by him and Bin setting up a trap for Keen. I mean, he had to commit his flash to make the play happen, but at the end of the day, he gets Bin a kill. Trinity Force completed. Dragon now being started off by Canyon, but Shun doesn't want to give this one up for free. He's making his way back out, but Knight's going to be forced to catch that mid wave. And again, like we've seen many times in this series, it's Gen.G first to the objective. Gen.G a step ahead, but BLG ready to try and bully their way in. Chobi there, though. Four members of the team standing strong. And it's five grubs. It's a Drake. The stacking angle now gone for BLG if they want to try to rapidly do it. And Gen.G with almost a 3,000 gold lead. It's really important to appreciate how difficult it is to face check a Nidalee and a Senna, right? Like, Genji are very good at being first on the objective, and while you do have a Sejuani that can act as a front line, it's so dangerous to face check these, this composition because of how quickly they can just execute a person. Sven once famously said, if you have a mouse, you can dodge Nidalee Sphere. The <laughs> second part of that quote people don't appreciate is, you have to be able to see it. Yeah. <laughs> if she's in the bush, if you don't see it coming, it's just instant 100 to zero. And look, for now, it's a Hextech alternator, but Canyon has so much money, he is dangerously close to that first big item spike. We also all know, walking in general, really the most OP skill in League of Legends. <laughs> Chovy, though, that was a little bit of a dicey situation if they somehow did find a good angle for the fight. Genji did deny it, because Chovy was sitting on like 1,600 gold there. 
now does have his Blade of the Rune King finish. From this point on, the Yone is only going to become a bigger and bigger threat. And because of Knight's play toward the top, uh, towards the top side of the map, his Force TP hasn't been able to catch as many waves, leading to Chovy getting a pretty sizable lead in the 1v1. I mean, look at how scared Knight has to play right now. Oh, he yeah. is hovering underneath his tower. He knows how easy it is for Chovy to just 100% commit. You know, you can just throw the ultimate out, the Q3, and with no Flash or Ayana, you're just going to die. So he's forced to play on the defensive. He's going to go back to base, pick up his item as well, along with a control ward. So items coming through across the board now. Dragon still a ways off, but the Herald immediately being started off by Gen.G. Overall, Gen.G, much firmer control. Game one felt like it was all about mitigating what BLG wanted to do this time around. Upping the pace themselves, really taking over again. Five kills to two. Now the Herald's going to drop as well, on top of the fact that they have five grubs. Easy push to break whatever tower they would like. Now a TP down to the bottom lane to cover here as Bin pushes in. Then the one factor that they may struggle with as we get later into the game, but for now, he's just focused on trying to take down the side lane objective, but shown on the way down too. They might just want to go for the all-in. Immediate ulti coming up for Bin. He doesn't have the way, but he might not need it. Good stun. Cassante going unstoppable though, and now the TP to follow. Bin trying to run. Good ulti to disengage away from Keen, but the rest of Gen.G on the hut. Shun, ready to offer that exit to his top laner. Now wants to turn the fight back with the stun. Not gonna get that good death back coming in from Canyon. Chovy now out of the pit in the meantime. Blade of the Rookie keeping him nice and healthy. Q3 out. BLG, bit of a messy extended fight, and it's a double for Canyon. In the last game, BLG was able to find these angles in the fight. Single out targets one by one. This time, Gen.G not going to let them. Very ready, triple teleport or double teleport rather coming through from both Jovi and Lance to ensure that Keen doesn't get taken out. And Cassante, if you're only there with a Jax and a Sejuan, he's gonna take such a long time to go down this canyon. Nice. Watch he side set from on. If that spear hits, he dies. Just continuing to run down. Really nice Italy. footwork there from on. No chase down will come through though. As we take a look at the MasterCard lane economy snapshot, you can see Lahens at, well, I mean, okay, bot lane's a bit fake news. <laughs> but, uh, don't, don't believe the headlines, yeah, don't, guys. Don't believe the headlines. But, you know, I, I remember watching the last Canyon game, and I tweeted, is this really a niddly angle? And it was. And then in this game, I questioned, is it really a niddly angle? And the moral of the story is, I need to stop asking Canyon, when is it a niddly angle? <laughs> yeah, he tells us when it's a niddly he angle. He tells us when it's the niddly angle. In your angle. defense, the last game he fell behind and then got funneled three shutdowns. So this I, game, a very different pace of Canyon Niddly. I Italy. swear, if this series is going to devolve into Shun and, and Canyon's like, I'm getting Niddly. No, no I'm no, getting no. Niddly. It's going to be Niddly versus Kindred. That's why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have to understand that as much as we try to script as much as we try to create narratives mid lane, Knight versus Chovy, if anyone's going to take it into their own hands, <laughs> it's Shunnin' Canyon, right? I mean, I, I, I think the beauty of this Nidalee pick is that it's so hard for the Sejuani to just keep up the pace once the momentum gets going. Every time Shun has tried to do something, Canyon has just answered on the map. He has more farm than his top laner does. Uh, he's just been terrorizing BLG's jungle, and his mobility and, and clear is just is crazy. So huge credit to Canyon. He's dominating in terms of the early game. He's been a huge part of transitioning Genji from this early to mid game advantage. They have a very healthy gold lead right now, and they're going to set their sights on the dragon. And look at that minimap Canyon already in the position. They get the mid push. They have control of the bot. Genji with once again immaculate control around these neutrals. And I think one of the big struggles for BLG is that Knight really cannot side lane. If he doesn't 100% know where Canyon is, he can never walk up to a wave. And frankly, even in the 1v1, Chovy heavily favored the raw power of a pick like the Yone on a side lane is very menacing. And we come back to that whole face checking thing, right? Now you have to walk into this fog of war. Genji is doing a good job of still controlling the mid wave. But the, the neutral objective is there, is BLG. The best they can do is cross map as Knight gets a tower in the top lane. No other recourse there. Can't walk into this Gen.G comp. BLG is the best that they can get. But I do want to echo, and that's, I think, the biggest difference. Yes, Faze and the hands are in a much better spot than they were in last game. But Gen.G in the last two years, ever since Chovy joined, has really risen and fallen, depending on what this player does. Last year at MSI, he wasn't able whatsoever to uphold the level in game number one. Imagine a lot of Chovy fans were worried, maybe some flashbacks to some of his past performances. This time around, him having that consistent pressure and prio actually is a really big part because it enables the rest of Gen G to play the way that they do. And how often do we talk about a player as best in the world or potentially best in the world 
with the caveat that they've never made an international final. Took by right. night like yeah. that for, for quite a while. And then he won MSI. And now here we are in a best of five at MSI where Gen G fans are scared of a repeat and where BLG fans and Knight fans would be happy to see a run back. They're looking for a pick. Chovy's been caught in side lanes before. There was a scary moment against Top Esports where he got caught. But uh, that will not happen, at least in this game, for now. I mean, I'm adding a lot of caveats there. <laughs> He's for not now. caught. Very, I like yeah. it, Betty. Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me those caveats. Yeah. Sow the seeds of doubt. Yeah. Guys, Canyon oh, is hey, not hey. caught. <laughs> But Still why, not caught. Why would you do that? <laughs> you want you want this to go the distance? I've got to keep testing my caster curse. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 caster yeah. curses are not real. Yeah. We all know this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're not. How's, how's KT doing? <laughs> okay, I, that wasn't me. <laughs> well, why, why are KT? Chobie, anyway, oh. Big seal. Chobie now going to be in trouble. Showing now trying to punish with a clean follow up here. But four members are on the top side for Gen G. BLG though looking for a bit of a tussle. The TP response. One member TP in the midst of three. Key now going to be able to walk away. That's the Cassante. Gives him the luxury to just back up. Spear gonna connect onto a minion, and now Gen G just fishing for these moments. Q3 from Chovy is good. Keen getting shredded, but is able to back away. A very tense moment as all five members gather in the top lane. The tower still stands, as far as I can tell, for BLG. Pace is very far up. Vin trying to look. Pace. In trouble, Chovy ready to respond with the Q3. Pays though, taking a massive chunk. Good damage coming in from Chovy. Soul inbound, bringing him back. One of the things we haven't really talked about yet, but actually I think is a big factor in these el is elongated fights is Genji already have an Ocean Drake, and they have both Senna and Nidalee in these longer trades where you're just kind of trading poke, you're trading some hits left and right. The extra sustain actually makes a really big difference, and I haven't finished towards sustain, or Chovy also picks so, up yeah, a shield no, bow. I just noticed as you were saying that, yeah. I looked at the items, and he just went back to base, instant shield bow completed. <laughs> Two-item double lifesteal Yone is one of the most unfun champions to try to duel in the game. You cannot do any damage. He is essentially a drain tank in a 1v1, and a team fight, he still has Q3. Three. He still has alt and a get out of jail free card so in the E. He'll either do Infinity Edge next, or he might go a little defensive depending on his preference. We know that Chovy's had a number of uh, yeah, Yone builds he's, throughout he, his yeah, career. He's, 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 <laughs> been a, he's been a Blade of the Rune King into Sunfire guy yeah, before. True. Jack People Show as well. Thank yeah. you, Riot Balance Team, for taking that out of the equation. Hey, was there a Ninth Vow period oh, too? I don't, I, I don't know. Ch Chovy, really, he was also the guy that was the, the best Cassante mid for quite a while. There's I just, remember. He loves tanks. Guys, <laughs> always has. Unrelated, but it's popped into my head now, and I have to say it. Uh, are you, like, obligated from a whole that thought? Flash out from Knight. I mean, he has to, right? Because the root came through for pace, and now they saw the Baron. Baron, the commitment there. They're going to shred through this. Chovy does a lot of damage to the objective. Been sprinting up to the objective. Out of the Zoning they coming in out. for Keen. They can try to take the top laner down, but now Chovy looks for the pick. They know they have the angle. A confident flash over the wall. Chovy goes right back and keeps his sights on the objective. Clean, calm, collected from the side of Gen G, but they want to collect a few more heads. Chovy sprinting forward. Q3 ready to go. Nice engage. They might lose one oh. of the process, but the heads are still standing. Chovy taking down Ott, just continuing to rain down auto attacks. Ben has the ulti, but he's forced to back away. Sean going to get sent back to base in a body bag, and Gen G again dominate the exchange. Chovy comes up huge on the Yone immediately. The flash from Knight is forced, and they're able to extend the fight from there. Bin not having TP means Genji can play way more aggressive, and the Baron about to fall. PLG look like a very different team from game one to game two. Some slight draft adaptations from Genji and Knight. I don't think he's a bad Orianna, but. I think Chovy's a very good Yone. <laughs> uh, no flash available on Knight means that he gets quickly collapsed. And with the numbers difference means that Genji know that they can force a fight. And look at this combo between Keen and Chovy. Very nicely done. Tears the fight apart in favor of Genji. And they convert it into a Baron. Not enough damage available. And it's that earlier root from Haze that forced the flash from Knight, which means that Chovy can force a guaranteed connect with the stun with that oh. flash right and hey, Jack there, show. there's Jack shows. <laughs> it's gonna come through. But it's better, like, imagine, he is about to sit on a soul point for Ocean Soul. Nidalee and, and Senna as well, he is legitimately never gonna die. Like, uh, 
if he starts a fight by one-shotting Knight, he can build armor for the rest of the game, and no one is really going to be able to kill him for at least another couple items. Yes, Ben is supposed to be the scary threat. He finally has two items, but it might be too late. Genji are so far ahead in such a commanding position, and Knight cannot side lane against this Yone. I mean, I think this game was determined when the bot lane dive was thwarted by Genji. Yeah. We saw something similar in game one, but BLG were able to team fight their way back in. This time round though, Canyon with the lead that he had has just absolutely dominated in the jungle matchup. And and Genji have just snowballed through the objectives with their control and BLG haven't found a fight. Could this be it? DP, Chobi just fishing, trying to force down the objective. They've got mites. They've got Baron buff, the empowered Canyon behind them. Canyon, excuse me. Canyon as well. He is empowered. He is very Ten empowered. Specs. Four Great zero three. My man's reading. Well, not yet. Well, not yet. No, it's a ring now. I don't know how it turns into a book. Ultimately, Gen G in an excellent position. And again, we talk about how they needed to adapt. They've adapted wonderfully. The question is for BLG, they banned five champions from Chovy. They picked the sixth away in the Oriana, and still he found an angle. He found the Yone, and he's taken over this game. And in the meantime, Keen is also split pushing. It's a tough nut for BLG to crack if we come into game three tied up. I also love that, you know, we talk about the narrative, Knight versus Chovy. And in the last game, Mr. Chovy All goes Ulti seal, not going to connect at all. Immediately forced to back away, and Bin's already there. Chovy now in trouble. The Bob CC is there, the Q3 takes him nowhere. Chovy getting knocked down. BLG found a pick. They want to keep this going. Keep pushing in the top side, but it's the double stun from Bin. Bin now going to get locked up. Canyon taking down the Jax. Canyon clutch when Gen G needed most on an Elk. Running for their lives. Canyon, though, getting lower and lower. The heal about to come through. The Primal Surge. Trap in the brush, Genji on the hunt, BLG running. Look at Keen! Keen is ending the game in bot lane, while BLG is scrapping to try and get away from the fight. On then loses his life. Keen is trying to end the game, but what an incredible fight. Lahens with an amazing two-man knockup secures the going. fight, and Keen is looking to just end the game. Big thing there is Knight, obviously, is never going to cut through to Cassante. Sitting on only a crib loom. No way to win that 1v1 with the experience lead. And as a result, Gen G, even though Chovy ends up going down, BLG have to invest so much. And it's a flip from the last game where BLG held up Gen G's last ditch effort. And now, one end up going down. Good. Second they know one. they have to extend the fight. Bin stepping up, gets the flash out. They want to take Keen down. There's no big objective for them to transition this to, however, so it'll just be a kill. B needs to keep the play going. Bin, excuse me, pays. Healed up by Canyon, still standing for an extra moment. Ben just wants to finish the kill. Dashes forward, Lahens here, Canyon here, and Chovy as well. The LG forced to back off. They get a couple consolation prizes, but they effectively spend thousands of gold just to get that pick on Chovy. You'll still take that because two inhibitors are now down. Getting any map pressure is going to be so hard. Genji might have to give up a bounty gold uh, turret or two, but that alone not going to be enough to release their grip on this game. Then on the flank again. Lahens clearing what he came before he backs away. Objective bounty for the side of BLG. I mean, it's a small break, I guess, for BLG as they're able to get some kills back, a bit of gold, but the deficit is still astronomical. Knight. Canyon is still deathless in this game. And look, he's stealing more camps. He's, he's just taking everything away from Shun. He has, he's sitting on 3,000 gold, by the way. 3,000 gold unspent. We're gonna move past the initial fight that Genji ended up winning, and it becomes this chase down from BLG to try and get something back. A nice arrow connects onto Elk, which allows Bin to chase this down, get another kill. But really, it's just breadcrumbs as Genji still find themselves securing two inhibitors, so much control over the game, and a lot of money to spend. For BLG, if there was a Baron up Watch there, Canyon. maybe that is enough. That's his Anya's. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. He was sitting on the that the mesh eyes, though, Canyon. Maybe he feels he can't get more stacks. I don't know. My man is preserving the KDA and the game. They haven't won yet, guys. Sometimes you just he only has you know. Well, kinda... Canyon has been in a position where he has a very large gold lead on Nidalee before. 
See, remember when that we talked about practicing Chovy. our caster curses? Keen. What did we say about practicing the caster curses? Chronicler, here comes Keen. Elk now in trouble, cleanse out, but it does not matter. This Callista is a dead man walking. And in the meantime, Bin now on retreat. The rest of BLG getting cut down. Gen G just looking to close it out here. Dashboard from Keen, not quite able to find the ulti angle. Knight throwing the ball over the wall, but Gen G just going to throw it right back. They are not scared. Canyon stepping up, making good use of the Zanyas. A bit of poke back to him, but Chovy already pushing it in the mid lane. BLG won the last desperate hold from the solo laners, and Chovy not going to give him an angle. Immediate flash forward on the fate seal. TP in Genji striking back here in game two, reminding BLG just how deep Chovy's champion pool is. The experiment in game number one didn't end up working out. Genji regroup and bring us to 1-1, one, one, and one can only imagine what other surprises this series has in store. Genji, fight back. I mean, it. I will say that when we think back to game one, when Knight did get his Ari, he just had so much more agency in the oh, game. Yeah. And I, I don't think that his Oriana is bad, but his ability to have the same impact is just, excuse my pun, it's night and day. I'm gonna just gonna have that hang for a second, so if people want to roast you or laugh along with you, they can. And of course, in the meantime, if you're nostalgic for hard steel or new jeans from Worlds 23, check out Grind the Glory, a short behind-the-scenes documentary on how the 2023 Worlds opening ceremony presented by Mastercard was brought to life. You can scan the QR code on screen or head over to the LOL Esports YouTube page. And in the meantime, let's head on over to the desk to break that one down. Thank you so much, and I really appreciated the pun. Let me tell you something <laughs> about mental warfare. It goes a little like this. Hey, Knight, here, you can have your Ari and can have a great game. However, for the rest of the series, you're going to have to play champions that you don't enjoy as much. And I, as the jungler on the <laughs> other side, Shun, will pick something that I know you like to play as well. And even though everyone hates me for it, I will get a lot of kills and continue to terrorize people with it. <laughs> we covered this at the beginning, but oh my gosh, we're like, both of these junglers, when yeah. push comes to shove, they're gonna be like, Give me the Kha'Zix, give me the Nidalee, give let the me Kendra. do it. We've seen it from both of them at this tournament throughout their careers. We were iffy on the pick. Yeah. Uh, Canyon has proven us wrong twice now. Yeah. Why does I he mean, keep getting away with sure. it? Shun has I don't us know wrong. if it's the pick. I, I feel like we should scribble at Nidalee and just put Yone because it was the fact yeah. that the Nidalee enabled the Yone set things up, but then also the fact that Kanye was in this position for the dive on bot lane was the real thing that broke open this game for Genji. Yeah, and this is crucial because we've talked about, oh, okay, we're so proud of BLG, you know, for holding back, for restraining yeah. themselves, but this kind of over-aggression, especially on the bot side of the map, is also a hallmark of their play. It's something that cost them a game in the TES series, uh, both of them, in uh, their playoffs run. So I think it, this, too, is BLG. And I think as well, the fact you kind of hit on it there, this is what we saw Genji do against Top Esports, was yep. we are going to control the bot lane, deny you the opportunity to get ahead there, and then we're going to lean into Chovy popping off. We're going to have Keen having a good time. This was the formula that they constructed to beat Top Esports, and now we can see in Game 2 it's working against BLG as well. And something that might also kind of explain uh, the Nidalee, but also the way uh, Genji liked to play, and I got this from listening to Yamato actually, he said that he finds it so impressive that for Genji, what is a brick straight great strength of them is that they can space in fights very well, specifically when they have ranged champions, yep. and they know how to play around that expertly, especially when you have a lead. This is another, for me, um, yes, in the column of Nidalee for Canyon. <laughs> yeah, I think they play with Fog really well, they play with Poke really well. We see them setting up for this Baron. We also see the value of the Yone pick coming out. There were seven mid lane bans wow. in this draft, uh, and Chovy coming out on something that he's still so comfortable and so confident in. Also, I think very disrespectful from Knight in this play. You had just gotten your flash burn in the exact spot, <laughs> and then you're like, two seconds later, do you know what I should do? <laughs> I, it's just, it was a, it's a weird call from Knight, and he gets punished really, really well by Gen G. And I think that's the story of this game for me in a lot of ways. It's punishing really well. Mm -hmm. The draft had a ton of bans towards mid lane. Cool, you go towards the Ari Ariana, we have an answer that's a really strong punish. You want to die bot, we're going to punish there. You want to overextend a Baron, we're going to punish there. And I think that's what Gen G did so well throughout game number And it's two. a pretty yeah. clear recipe for success, I would say. Uh, we had our board with the matchups in the beginning oh. of the day. I don't know if there's anything you particularly would like to change or if it was more a team effort overall. 
Uh, Let's see. Are all the heads still on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> oh, there's a, it's a cluster in the middle over it here. It is, it is. So? I'm I'm kind of sticking you to did? the same thing. I'll, like, I'll stick to mine. The only thing that actually may be moving slightly is that mid lane matchup more in favor of Chovy. Okay. I think um, even in the first matchup, he looked a very, very strong getting oh, lead you against have to Nice. Take him yeah. off and yeah. back on. <laughs> then, oh my uh, god. I don't want to rip your, your. It's fine. Just tear. Yeah, just oh god. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be back later, but this is just supposed but, um, to be there. Oh yeah, I think we'll be back honestly, with the board in a bit. Chovy's been fantastic. He is not. He's been so so strong, yeah. and Knight really hasn't found an answer to him. And I think it has been the weak, weakest part of the map but for BLG. So it's one game sample size of each. I guess the laning strength of Chovy is, is really really great. But I guess yeah. it's is it the context of that was your best champion in the first game? Yeah, and I think you even looking at that first game, he lost lane. Yeah. Like, let's be real, yeah. he came out with a deficit, and it was him playing team fights that really brought it back. So I think if you're looking for a one on one and you're not getting Ari, it's definitely going further and further in Chovy's favor as this series goes on. Yeah, and I think the big thing is that in this meta, um, obviously you really want Knight to be comfortable, but I think it's Chovy who's way more comfortable on stuff like the Orianna, like the Azir, which we've seen BLG obviously ban into Chovy along with the Corky. Um, and with Talia being taken off the board as well, that does pinch Knight a bit. Not that he can't play other things, because he obviously can, but with with what's strong in this current meta, I do think Chovy is a lot more comfortable. Yeah, and especially when you're able to bring out, I think it's the flexibility of the mid jungle for me that is mm -hmm. the big deciding factor. The fact that you're able to bring out the Yone, you have these picks that you won't really have practiced religiously coming into this meta, but you're able to bring them out because Canyon is comfortable bringing out mm -hmm. a Nidalee that we haven't really seen before. Something that's a little bit out of pocket, but works very well for the given situation. That flexibility is why we're even seeing teams like we're G2 seeing too succeed. much of the Nidalee. What are yeah. you talking yeah. about? No, yeah, but no. it's the flexibility <laughs> no. is the thing. So, right. so going into the next game, I just heard BLG have selected blue side. Yeah. yeah. First pick. <laughs> <laughs> no. Shit's like, this yeah. is my champion. I was playing this in LDL. No. I was famous I'm for gonna it. I'm going to give you a For real, or is there an actual first pick you'd like to see? Uh, no, I, I don't think they... <laughs> Yeah. First pick. Uh, I think they will try to get Knight on something that's super comfortable. Yeah. I think that's their heavy priority because I do still think mid prio matters so much in this matchup. That's what facilitates something like Nidalee to go for those aggressive invades where she can farm super, super well. Uh, so I still think Knight would be the prio there. Leveraging that blue side and first pick. And not Senna first pick. That's not, it. Yeah, okay. I don't that's think good. we'll see that. <laughs> All right, we'll see if they listen to our analysts. I doubt it, but hopefully this is a conclusion <laughs> they've come to by themselves. We'll be right back with game three between Genji and Field.